Well, we've invited the candidates for Senate to join us here on 11 TV Hill, and each will have the opportunity to really discuss their vision for Maryland and the country. And this week, we're joined by Republican candidate Richard Douglas. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Glad to be here. Thank your, you. your website, uh, Strongly on Jobs, big focus on becoming a, a big workforce here in Maryland. If you're able to do it, how do we train more people to take advantage and enjoy the benefits of jobs returning to Maryland? Well, first we have to attract them and, and make sure they come to Maryland. Sure. And uh, unfortunately, in the last few years, um, our congressional delegation on Capitol Hill, it seems to me, has been indifferent mm -hmm. to the need to bring work to Maryland. In fact, during the eight years of the O'Malley administration, we lost 80,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. Small businesses also left our state. We need to bring them back. Sure. Uh, this week, Ford Motor Company announced that it's going to make a $5 billion investment in new factories outside the United States. A year ago, General Motors did the same thing. Today, we hear that an American has opened a factory in Cuba. It's mm -hmm. the first American factory in Cuba since the revolution. And uh, what does that tell me? Well, we're looking at a new maquiladora industry in Cuba, moving over from Mexico. Yeah. I don't think any of that's good for the United States. I think what we need to do is elect people to the United States Senate and the House of Representatives who will make it their business every single day to find ways to bring work to Maryland, to, make, to convince manufacturers that they should come to our state. Part of that is fixing the United States code. There are problems in the US code that make the United States in general an unattractive place for foreign investment, although compared with many other countries, we're, we're near the top, but we could do more. We also need to find a way to make uh, it possible for the, the federal side of, of our representation to work with Annapolis. And if I'm a US Senator from Maryland, I'm gonna be in Annapolis every day talking to, to Larry Hogan while the, um, the Maryland General Assembly's in session. Uh, I don't think there's anything impossible about this. I think what it takes above all is the will to do it. And I haven't seen that in our congressional registration. I'm sorry to say it. If we become attractive, do you think that folks here who are in the most need of jobs will have an opportunity there? Do you think that we'd be able to train them to get into those jobs? Yes, I do. And okay. I'm going to give you an example. There are uh, small businesses today in the city of Baltimore that are doing their utmost to bring people in and try to train them. Sure. Um, there are obstacles to, to bringing young people in who, who honestly, genuinely want to work. Some of the younger people have uh, minor criminal records that make it difficult for them, for example, to get a security clearance or to get a TWIC, you know, to work in the port. And I think part of our responsibility would be to try to find ways to, to make it possible for people who really want to get ahead to, to do that sure. despite these obstacles. We have in Baltimore City uh, an, a, a phenomenon called the hub zone, where the idea is to encourage investment in the city, to bring business into the center city, and to make it possible to create jobs in the center city. Um, I think it's a terrific program, but I think we should look at it to find ways to make it better. Sure. Is it possible for these small businesses, for example, to completely recapture their investments when they come into the hub zone and invest? I think we could probably do that better. Um, on the whole, really what it takes is people with the, with the desire um, to work with the business community, mm -hmm. work with the community in general to find out the kinds of obstacles that prevent young people from working and find a way to solve them. I'm ready to do that. I want to do it. Uh, I'm shocked it hasn't been done already. You worked so. in counter narcotics for a while. Drugs, of course, an issue, whether it's statewide, national as well. How do, yeah. we, how do we get some of these drugs off of our streets and get some folks some treatment as well, yeah. I guess? Well, I appreciate you mentioning that. In, in the Bush administration, I was uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Counter Narcotics. Uh, I had a $1 billion budget every year, and my job was to support the efforts of combatant commanders around the world, primarily Afghanistan, Pakistan on the one hand, National Guard on the other, Colombia, to uh, find ways to combat drug trafficking. Um, that was done because it's in our interest to, mm -hmm. to combat drug trafficking. Um, the number one way to get drugs off our street is for Americans to stop consuming them. Um, that's, I think, that's a, a part of the equation that we tend to overlook. Um, there's a lot to answer for on the, on, the, on the other side of the border in terms of corruption and so forth, but we have a consumption problem in this country that we need to get our arms around. Richard Douglas there running against Mr. Douglas on the Republican side or State House Minority Whip Delegate uh, Kathy Shalega and Chris Kafalas, who worked as an attorney and former Governor Bob Ehrlich's administration. As for the Democrats, Congressman Chris Van Hollen and Congresswoman Donna Edwards will go head to head. She currently serves Maryland's fourth district and was the first African-American woman to represent Maryland in Congress. Van Hollen represents Maryland's eighth district and is the ranking Democrat on the House Budget Committee. Again, we've invited each of these Senate candidates to join us here.
here at 11 TV Hill. Each will have the opportunity to discuss their vision. Stay with 11 News for all of your commitment 2016 coverage. You can read candidate profiles at WBALTV.com and on our free mobile app.